Welcome, my name is Tishara and this is StarMate. This is going to be my first StarMate episode and today I wanted to show you some of the features and design choices I made uh, while designing this ship here in front of us. This is the Stormcloud. It's basically a fleet escort for the Winter Shade, the carrier over there in the back. And I wanted to uh, illustrate with this video uh, why I designed the way I designed this ship. So let's get to it. I just jumped into the core and we are in control of the ship now. And I'd like to start with showing you some of the special features this ship has and explain why I designed it this way. Basically when I started designing a ship I wanted to have a specific role within a fleet or if it is a standalone ship uh, to have the features that it needs to survive or complete its uh, assigned task. Well, in this case it's a fleet escort so it will be part of the fleet but I also wanted it to have enough firepower and survivability to uh, fly on its own, uh, perhaps as picket duty or exploration in sectors the fleet is going to move to. And because of that, uh, this ship is heavily designed around its weaponry. And a couple of other abilities it has. As you can see it has a number of turrets. Um, the front ones, the smaller ones, are basically AMC's and the bigger ones are for anti-fighter purposes or just adds general firepower to its main weaponry. I also wanted this ship to have the capability to land, for example on the planet. Um, it's a bit too big for the current plans we have now in StarMate, but it might be feasible in the future to land it on uh, planets if they ever make them bigger. I did manage to land it on nice planets because they have nice flat surfaces, but that's about it. Um, to accomplish this I added landing gear to the ship, as you can see here. It sits nice and stable on these legs if the surface is flat. Uh, otherwise, well, it's not all that uh, that stable uh, according to uh, to the surface if it's uh, all rough and uh, uneven like green planets or purple planets. I also added a hatch at the bottom for cargo or even if you want to deploy some troops you can load the hatch and then load in your cargo or your troops. So it's, it's uh, nice and flush with the legs and reaches the ground in a smooth motion. Well, of course this is only for on planets. If you are in flight mode then you can just retract everything and everything is nice and protected. The second feature I wanted this ship to have is a couple of drone bays. Uh, basically I wanted the drones to be added uh, to confuse the enemies, add some additional firepower from unexpected angles and um, make use of the new rails of course because they are awesome. That's this button. It launches the drones from both sides, opens the hatches and there it goes. The main issue I have with this is that your camera resets every time you do this. It's not really what I would have liked but oh well, you can't do anything about it. Let's close it up again. These are basically the main features the ship is defined by. Um, the style of the ship is of course 
the same as the carrier over there because I wanted to be part of the same fleet and I quite like it um, it's not that complicated but there's a nice 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 feel to it I've got an interior on this ship as well so let's hop out of the core here we are the core is all the way in the front in the cockpit as you can see and you can protect it by closing it off when I started the build of this ship I started of course with the core and as everybody knows that the scientist ship with uh, yourself it's always very difficult to know where you want to place your core in the past it was just easy enough to well, place it roughly in the middle or perhaps in the back if you had a more combat oriented ship uh, like this uh, because you wanted to protect it to not being one shot at and uh, basically thrown out of your, of your core of your ship uh, now it doesn't really matter of course uh, with the current update of the game because you have to destroy a lot more of the ship before you can destroy the core as well so I wanted a ship with a lot of interactivity in the interior uh, it's basically the same design philosophy I uh, did with the carrier as well and I started with this cockpit design the chairs you see over here well, you can actually sit in them of course here we go uh, you can't do all that much from here but there is one button you can push over here and it basically retracts your chair and turns it around so that's a nice little feature doesn't really serve a practical purpose but it's just cool we can put it back in its position then it turns on the light raises the display and shows some relevant information well besides the main bridge of course we have a number of other areas in the ship we go to these uh, doors I added all interactive doors in this interior it gives a really immersive feeling I think and you go through the main hallway this is the entrance to the ship by the way we'll get to that later and then we can enter through here to the rest of the ship let me get some gravity first there we go in the first room we encounter over here is the medical medical room uh, we've got two beds with some displays to uh, display the state of the patients and a small office for the medical officer it's not that big because the ship itself isn't that big either and the crew it can fit about eight people this is the recreation slash mess hall people can sit here, eat, uh, relax if they're not on duty things like that there's an elevator at the end to go a floor below but we'll get to that later as well well the next room is the bedroom basically the quarters for the crew they all have their own bunk beds and basically I added this door piece to make it look like you can close it off to have some privacy and rest if you are sleeping so here is the bathroom nice mirror uh, with some shower stalls and well, <laughs> the throne of course let's close this up and go through this hallway all the way at the back is basically the last room of this level it's the engineering room the jump drive and some other monitor equipment and things like that well, it's not that big of an interior but it is nice and big enough for a ship this size let's go back to the mess hall and to the elevator downstairs we have to call it up first uh, this leads to the 
cargo bay slash uh, cargo lift that we saw in the beginning. Let's grab the elevator downstairs. There we go. It's not a really fast one, but fast enough because it's only one level that we have to go down. There we are. And this is the cargo bay. Enough space to store a lot of items. And the cargo lift that can get you to the planet's surface. I also added a button here on the cargo lift itself so you can remote control it to lower it as you can see here and of course raise it again if you need to. It can also be done from here from the ship itself same principle Let's go back up again to the mess hall and show you the actual entrance of the ship itself. Here we go, all the way back. Let's close some doors behind us. Don't want to suck all out all the air. Because it really is air, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, you go through here. There's an elevator all the way to the top because I have a USD port at the top of the ship. You don't see it that often, but it's the only place I could really fit it within the design uh, instead of the side like you usually see. Let's go out of gravity again. As you can see, it goes all the way to the top to exit. You can close it up here, it goes down again, and then it closes the last doors over here to close up the air lock lift combo. There you go. Well, let's test out some combat features of this ship. Some weapons. It has the cannons that are basically standard for a lot of ships. If you fire them, you see that they have a decent sized projectile that fires. Um, it's a cannon cannon combination and it's a 85% acceleration and not 100% because I liked the bigger projectiles better this way and if you um, put it to 100% it looks a bit weird in my opinion uh, all the big projectiles, projectiles uh, firing so close together. So those are the main weapons. Um, it has also a 20% ion effect, so it will shoot through shields. And next to the cannons we have a number of uh, missiles, as you can see here. Three types, uh, and they're all the same. Uh, missiles uh, with a lock-on feature and a 20% explosion effect to uh, finish off a ship. Uh, they fire at the front, basically the orange slides you see over there, and they do a decent amount of damage, as you can see over here. Next to that we have a overdrive feature to accelerate the ship faster points out to 25.8% at the moment uh, for this current setup. Uh, we have some rudimentary scanners as well. Uh, they're not that fast uh, because this is basically a fleet escort ship. I didn't want it to have all that an impressive scanning equipment uh, because the main carrier will do that anyway. And it also has a radar jammer. Also not uh, the most efficient use of the uh, radar jammer system. Um, because if you have it on and you fire the cannons, you see that the power goes down slightly. So if you fly as well, then yeah, power can be a problem. But again, uh, this is not really needed because it's part of a fleet anyway. There's a jump drive as well, uh, 
British one. It's decent size, doesn't really charge really fast, but not slow either. And of course it has the docking port at the top to dock it to the USD port of a station or perhaps another ship, depending on what you have. Well, those are basically the main features of this ship. And you can download it in um, as shown in the link below and put it in the in the scri description to be put on the docks. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Perhaps uh, learn from the uh, design or uh, modify it to your own liking and I'll hope to see you next time.